Hello there. I'm Mr. Sam Shutarik. Um, today we'll be solving. Um, this is our very recent paper. This is uh, November 2021, paper 42 of Computer Science um, 9618. Open the evidence document. Make sure your names and your candidates are present. Save the evidence document in your work area as followed by your central number candidate number. If a programming language does not support arrays, a list can be used. We'll use this list because we're using Python. A source file in question two, uh, the file is the characters.txt file. So we have the file handling over here. A computer program is needed to store jobs in the order priority. Each job has a job number and a priority from one to 10, with one being the highest priority and 10 the lowest. The program stores the jobs in a global, in a global 2D array. The pseudocode to declare the array is as follow. Declare job array. So it's 2D array 0 to 99 and 0 to 1 of integer. For example, job 0, 0 stores the job number and job 0, 1 stores the priority of the first job. Okay, right. So that's the job number and that's the job, uh, the, the priority. Uh, priority in case of 2D array. The global variable number of jobs stores the number of jobs currently in the array. Write a program code to declare the global 2D array of jo jobs and a global variable number jobs. Okay. Now what I've done is I've actually, in order to save time, I have solved it and I'll uh, discuss the the code with you. If you have a problem, we can uh, you can message me on that. So the first part basically will be done this way that we will declare jobs and we'll declare number of jobs these two globally we have to add comments okay because we're using python so it's necessary for us to add the comments this way okay so i'll read the question from here the procedure initialize stores minus one in each of the array elements and assigns zero to the number of jobs write program code for the procedure initialize okay so um if you're using a function this is the way it has been done uh, initialize function okay uh, we can use a procedure so jobs and number of jobs for x in range 0 to 100 jobs dot append minus minus one and number of jobs equals to zero but i won't be using this because i have solved this using classes and this particular part uh, i'll show you i have done using this so i made class job queue and def initial and def init method, which is initialize. So self global and self global number of jobs, number of jobs and global jobs. This is what we have done. That's the first part of initialize that we did over here using classes because um, we are allowed and we can use classes as well. Okay. A class declaration can be used to declare a record. So we can do that. Okay. A procedure add job. This is quite interesting and quite important as well. Takes a job number and priority as parameter. Okay, so you can see over here is I made a procedure add job and it's taking two parameters, job number and priority. Stores the job in the next free array element. Outputs added if the job was successfully stored. Outputs not added if the job was not successfully stored in the array. Okay, so you can see what here is. What I have is if the uh, number of jobs, self number of jobs is equal to 100, then obviously not added. Okay, it's already full. Else, we can say is new job. We just uh, made a, 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 a new variable. Okay, a new job variable is, um, in fact, you know what I can do is, uh, the reason why we have used new job over here is uh, maybe I can just uh, write over here. So because this could create a problem, the purpose of new job, okay, the new job that I have created is to hold the new job that is being added to the job queue. So that's the purpose of the new job over here. So I have the priority in the job number, I is zero, while I is less than number of jobs and um, global jobs i is less than new job, then keep on incrementing. You can do it even i is equal to i plus one. Um, then obviously, 
uh, insert, keep on inserting it over here. So this way, uh, this will keep on adding the new jobs uh, one by one itself. Okay, the loop keeps on running. I'll demonstrate you. And then obviously, uh, number of jobs, uh, increments, and it says added. So this is how this keeps on adding, right? So you can see over here. So basically the add method takes two parameters, job number and priority. Um, it creates a new job by creating a list with the priority over here uh, and job number, and then inserts it into the array in the correct position we can see to maintain the sorted order. So if the array is full, uh, for example, if there's 100 jobs, the method prints not added instead of adding the new job, otherwise it prints added to indicate that the job was successfully added. So this is the way it's done, right? So hopefully this is uh, clear. Uh, the main program uh, should call uh, procedure initialize and then use the add job procedure to add the following, write the program code. So obviously this is what we do. We just uh, have to do is uh, use over here, uh, the main program code would create job queue object and add five uh, jobs into it with different priorities, okay? And, and then it would uh, call the incessant short method to sort the jobs and print array method to print them in order, okay? When a new job has been added, the array is sorted into sending a numerical order priority with incessant short. Uh, write a program for the procedure insertion short to sort the data into ascending numeric or priority. Well, before I uh, you, you you discuss this, you should know what insertion sort actually is. Otherwise, you will have a problem if you've forgotten. Insertion sort tends to be different uh, as compared to your bubble sort. So uh, let me just recap. So what happens in insertion sort is, uh, let's discuss this first. Uh, it is a simple, I'm sorry. It's a simple sorting algorithm which stores the array by shifting elements one by one. Uh, falling are some of the important features. It has one, it's one of the simplest implementation. It is efficient for smaller data sets, but very insufficient for larger set lists. Insertion sort is adapted. That means it can reduce the total number of steps uh, if given a particular sort of list. Okay, it's better than selection and bubble sort algorithms. Its space complexity is less like bubble sorting. Insertion sorting also requires single additional memory space. Oh, and it's stable. It does not change the relative order of elements with e equal keys. So let's take this array. So basically what happens over here is, uh, let me explain through this. For example, this is this is what, what, what we have. So insertion sort basically will work is that we start by dividing the array in the sorted section and an unsorted section. So, okay, we uh, put the first element as the only element of the sorted and the rest of the element are unsorted. So we start from here, okay? Uh, the first element, the unsorted section, is the next element to put into the correct position. Okay, sort section items in the sort. And so what we do is, uh, so basically we, we always uh, we always start with the second and we compare this with the previous one. Okay, you'll see how it's, how it's different from bubble sort. So we copy the element to be placed into another variable so it doesn't get overridden. Okay. Um, we compare if the previous is more than the item being placed, copy the value into the next position. Uh, if there are no more items in the section to compare with, the items to be placed must go at the front. Okay, so this will come at the front and this will go at the back. So we get two over here, we get nine over here. Okay, now what happens is um, items to position. Here, we come to the next one. And now what we do is we compare this with this. Okay, belongs here, uh, copied from the previous section and we place it here. We compare with this. If the item in the sort section is less than the item to place, the item uh, to place goes after it in an array. Then what we have is, uh, we have in this order, right? Now we are over here. Now we'll compare this part with this part, okay, as you can see. So items to position over here. So now we're going to compare this. So uh, we'll compare with this, it will compare this with this, then it will compare with this, then it will compare with this. 
So in like in bubble sort, it doesn't just compare with the next one and so on. No, it's so it compares with this, this, this in one go. And if it's there, then it shifts. So you can see what here is, it will compare, it will compare, and it will compare. Okay, so uh, after comparison, it will see uh, where it has to place itself. This keeps on going on. Um, then one comes in, one compares with nine, one compares with seven, one compares with five, one compares with two, and one knows that I belong over here. So I, I will insert myself over here. This is why we call it the insertion sort, because it will insert itself at the uh, priority where it has to be inserted. It's in send ascending order or descending order. So that's why the name insertion has been given on, okay? Bubble sort, so basically bubbles up. That's the way it goes, okay? Uh, the process goes on, the process goes on, then four comes in and four will insert itself where it uh, thinks that it has to be inserted. So uh, this is how, how basically it. So let me um, somehow explain this again. So uh, if I run this, um, this is the output that I get. You can see over here is that we see that the following have been added and I have the following jobs with their priority. And see they have been listed down in the priorities in an order. So 78 has a priority one, 30 has a priority eight, nine, nine, and 10. So this is what we have. Um, let me just uh, show you the code again once more. So, um, this is where we talk about the, the add job. Okay. Um, so basically, uh, over here, the new job is a list that contains two values, the priority of the job and the job number. The purpose of new job is to hold new job that is being added to the job queue. When add job method is called, uh, with job number and priority, the method creates a new list, new job, with the priority and job number as its elements. The list represents the new job that is added to the queue. The new job list is then compared with the existing jobs in the global jobs list to determine its correct position based on its priority. The while loop in the add job method uses the index i to iterate over the existing jobs in the global jobs list until it finds the correct position in uh, position to insert the new job. So this is the explanation of this, right? It's already explained uh, well, about this, this particular part, okay? And this is the insertion sort method. And here's the explanation of the insertion sort method, how is basically it's working. Then the insertion uh, sort method iterates over the elements in the global job list starting from the second element index one as you can see for each element it saves the current priority and job number in the current one and current two respectively it then compares the priority of the current element with the priority of the previous element in the list moving the uh, the current element leftwards in the list as long as priority is smaller than that of the previous element once it has been found the correct position for the current element the insertion sort method inserts it into the list at that position and continues iterating over the remaining elements in the list until all elements have been sorted based on their priority. Okay, right. By calling the insertion sort after adding jobs to the queue, the method ensures that the jobs are always sorted in ascending order based on their priority, which allows print array method to display the jobs in their correct order. Okay. So this is how basically your insertion uh, sort is working, okay? Uh, then we have the printer over here, okay? So the, the print itself, the process of code printer is this uh, one one uh, priority. This is to print the lists of jobs in the job queue along with their corresponding priorities. The printer method of the job queue class, it trades over the elements in the global job list and then prints job number following by string priority followed by the priority value of each job the string function is used to convert the job number and the priority values to strings so that they can be concatenated with, uh, with uh, other string parts and printed as a single string this method is called after the jobs in a queue have been sorted based on the priority using the insertion sort as a result the jobs are printed in ascending order based on the priority 
with the job number and priority values displayed side by side for each job. The purpose of this code is to display the jobs in a queue along with their priorities in a human readable format that can easily be understood by the user. Right. So this is the entire code. Okay. Um, so uh, you can try it. Okay. If there's a question, you can ask me.